Hey YouTubers, welcome to another uh, DCS Wolfpack uh, tutorial as well as a historical account of a system that was used during World War II uh, as an early, it was, it was an NDB or non-directional radio beacon system uh, that was used in the war, uh, actually in the beginning of the war we had the system, it was classified until 1947 uh, just after the end of the war and if you're familiar with uh, just regular NDB navigation, you know it's pretty simple. Uh, you just tune in uh, your radio, your ADF radio, to the frequency of the NDB. Uh, the little arrow on your uh, automatic direction finder, or ADF, will point to that station. Uh, you basically get the get the needle pointing straight forward. Uh, and you will head directly to that station. Uh, NDBs are still used today. Um, and I want to talk about the World War II system, however. And the YG system was for land. The YE system was for aircraft carriers. And it was a UHF uh, system, um, and it was an NDB. Uh, so if you jump in the B-17, the, uh, the NDB system works exactly like it does today, for the most part. Um, you just set your station. And if I look, if I pull up my map here, there's various stations you can see. CM, uh, the airport that we are at right now is uh, it's AM. So if we jump in the B-17, you can actually tune to any of these stations. Uh, use your ADF. Uh, it's probably called something else back then. And that's why B-17s were called Pathfinders because they had all these high-tech navigational systems. They also had an early ILS system. Uh, called the Lorenz system and then later on it, it, was, it was changed to something else but basically that was the precursor to ILS. Um, so let's say you had a ship out here and it was transmitting on this beacon you could just tune to that uh, frequency and the B-17s could find it very easily. Now an airplane like the P-51 uh, doesn't have that option. Okay. Um, if you're using non-realistic navigation these little double arrows here those will point to your waypoints so they're not really uh, not really doing anything. Um, it's not. This is not. Uh, it's. Uh, you know. I always thought this was an ADF indicator, and and it's not. So, <laughs> I guess they're dropping bombs somewhere back there. Um. What? Uh, well, let me get back to the uh, the YE and the YG system. So it is an NDB system, and the way you tune that. Uh, when I created the the mission. Actually, this is Max Stone's template here uh, for the Big Big Birds and Little Friends uh, campaign. But I added a, uh, you can see the little radio tower right here, you can kind of see it. And I'll tune to it right now, and it'll say HK or YG. This is the land navigation system. So the land navigation system, pretty much the code stayed the same. Now you got to understand this is a classified system, so people... Yo, Pied's going to talk about it. It was a top secret thing. And the codes were, were top secret. So, what the non-directional radio beacon would do is that it would transmit different frequencies in 30 degree sectors. So, from from north to 030, from 030 to 060, from 060 to east, and it was all in Morse code. So, you have to understand Morse code it, 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 to understand the system. Um, and then the standard pneumatic that was used and I'll see if I can if I can remember get it right was did Willie really kill a nasty ugly German man last Friday Saturday okay and each that was the pneumatic that pilots memorized to try to um, remember the standard codes. Now, uh, on the carriers, the codes would change all the time. Sometimes they change several times a day. Sometimes they just use one code and it would be posted. But the standard code that you'd always fall back on, um, not, not fall back on, but the standard code that, that was used frequently was this uh, pneumatic. So from 030 is did. So that's D and you should be hearing the identifier for D in Morse code. So it, uh, the next time the, the beacon comes on, let's listen. Okay, so those are three dots and if you look up the Morse code table, that's going to be an identifier for S. So if you remember our pneumatic, um, you know, did Willie kill a ugly nasty German man 
again Zero. last Friday, Saturday. Uh, Saturday would fall into here. Okay, it starts with did right here. So Saturday would fall into here, and that would mean that our beacon is somewhere is transmitting between north and three three zeros between here and here okay and you always got to remember that it's a from indication so even though it's it's transmitting from here to there that's the way the beams going that way so if we want to head to the station we have to head the reciprocal okay so if I get s if I get Sierra up here I know that the beacon is somewhere back here okay and if we look outside, I'll show you where the beacon actually is on the airfield. See that tower back there? That's where the beacon is. Okay? And that's why it's right in that sector that we said it would be. It's in that 030 to north sector, right in here. If it was directly north, it would be, you know, directly behind us, but it's not. Slightly slanted that way. Okay? And that confirms uh, exactly what we're, we're hearing. Um, as you fly around the thing, you know, a nice little cheat is if, if the code changes, if you're hearing three dots and all of a sudden changes something else, you're going across the, uh, the bearings. If the code stays the same, that means you're going directly to the station. Uh, but the best way to do it is to have a card, um, write down the, uh, each, of the, uh, each of the zero, th uh, the 30 degree uh, cuts of the pie, and memorize that pneumatic and uh, I'll write that in the description for you guys um, and that way you can track exactly where you are so now this only works on the UG system as you notice that changed slightly da -da -da -da. that was a uh, the signal for D okay so which is up here so it's kinda saying uh, you're mostly here but you're uh, kinda picking up this little section right here as well uh, if that makes sense. So as you travel across these, they will change. The best way to do it um, is to, you know, n uh, write down a write down a card and just write down the uh, pneumatic. Um, not the pneumatic, the uh, the the memory uh, item. Um, you got to remember this is only for the UG system. So when you change your beacons here, it will say UG in parentheses. Now the carriers, from my understanding on IL-2, just like real life, they will actually randomly generate a code for that carrier for that map. So it's never the same. I don't know if they've changed that since the 4.10 map. Anyway, I'm talking way too much about this. Like, cool system, classified system, and it worked great. The Japanese uh, intelligence guys could not figure out how this system worked because the codes changed, and it was actually pretty ingenious. Um, so they, you know, as the American aircraft flew back to the carriers, they, c they couldn't figure out how they were doing that. How, how did they know where to go? Um, and this is the system that was used. All right, DCS Wolfpack, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the description. If you're interested in IL-2 stuff, uh, go ahead and submit an application, and we'll see you guys in the air. Burn around.